Hi, brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray everybody is well on this Sunday, August 29th, 2021. I wanted to recap a little dream I had and mention others from the past uh, with Obama. But always I wanted to say praise the Lord Jesus Christ because our focus is on him and the signs of his coming. And these dreams are helpful, but most important is our faith in Christ and our knowledge of the Word of God so that we're on the rock. So I have had about four dreams about Barack Obama and I'm not thinking of him every day but I have certainly a full list of all the many things he has said and done and the evidence pointing to him as the Antichrist even from Scripture. Um, but this dream was as though I was in a very large either convention center or just one of those massive hotels that has enormous meeting rooms with partitioned walls that they can open up to make even larger, kind of like they do during political conventions. And there were just people everywhere milling about, um, or else it was just a very large lobby of a hotel, either of any of those. But at one point I had the sense I, or wh whoever I was observing, was in like a small working meeting, um, just several people, like maybe five, sitting around talking about something. And I think Obama was in that meeting and I was, or, you know, who I was in it was. And that was brief, but then uh, afterwards, Obama was sort of making a, it was heading towards, I think, an exit or restroom, who knows what, but crossing through the crowds just by himself. And I made a beeline for him and very deliberately, uh, well, I called out and I said, Mr. Obama, I don't think I said President Obama, and he turned, and as politicians always do, he has the big smile on his face, you know, the Obama smile. And as I got near him, he like went to fist bump me, which I thought was pretty cool because, you know, that's something you see a lot between him and uh, Michelle Obama. And it's just a, a kind of signature move of theirs, which I do not do. And I very deliberately held out my hand and forced him to shake my hand. And as I was holding his handshake, I looked him right in the eyes and I just said, Jesus Christ is Lord and the God. And his eyes turned deep black, totally black. And he lost that smile, that Obama smile. And that was the dream. He just looked uh, demonic and angry um, and contorted with, with very black eyes. I'm wondering about the significance of, you know, wanting to make hand contact, maybe to um, I don't know if it was the thing that feel the Holy Spirit that's abiding in me <laughs> versus what's in you or just to avoid the fist bump. Anyway, my other dreams in the past had shown him being very charming and flattering and smooth and then I kind of gave him away that he had phone called me because I gave away our code word which was orange and then he had said, oh now everybody knows it's me. And I thought that was about being revealed to the world at some point. But another one I had, doesn't seem to make sense, uh, it was a couple years ago, and I saw headlines going across a bread box in my actual kitchen saying, Trump to step down, Obama uh, to be inaugurated king. Well, that didn't happen, so I don't claim everything's from the Lord, you know? But the whole list of everything he's said and done, if anybody ever wants it, just leave a comment and I'll email it to you. Uh, and on top of that, that's it. I know everybody's watching the signs and the full court press to get everyone possible to receive the jab. And the, the kid gloves are coming off. You know, before it was encourage and coax and shame and everything and um, bribe. <laughs> but now we're getting to the point of, okay, well, without it, you can't do these things right now. It's the pleasures of life very soon it's the necessities of life and it's already cost many many people their jobs and we know that's how it has to work that is the word of God and it's trying and testing the whole world including those who have said they believe in Jesus Christ and the word of God now we all find out do we truly and do we love him more than life more than our belly you know when the need comes oh my gosh if we didn't prepare suddenly, we can't eat, 
can't work, can't earn, can't buy or sell, that's the test. And the scripture has always been very clear. I think it's just been theoretical. And now suddenly it is upon us. And I really do pray that everyone who's been watching for the Lord's return has understood that and has prepared. Because it's going to be that shock of when there's a mechanism one way or another that says, oh, wow, you, you can buy. And that's the shock where you don't want to have to deal with that. You want to be calm and know, yeah, we sure knew this was coming and that's why we're ready. And whoever couldn't prepare but would have, I mean, it's, it's all that God's heart, God knows our hearts. And if somebody would love to have prepared but they didn't have the means, I absolutely trust that the Lord will guide them to what's needful or provide it. But it also could be others need to be tested and, and fall. The Word of God says it in Daniel. Even the wise who turn many to righteousness and those with understanding who will you know, teach many, of them some will fall to be purified and made white and tried to be fit for the kingdom of God. So above all else is still always the first commandment that we will love the Lord our God with all our heart all our soul, all our mind, all our strength, and not love these lives unto the death even. Because what can man do to me? This flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. It's the spirit that quickens and gives life. So as long as we really believe that and have that joy of, know, of knowing the reality of eternal life through Jesus Christ, we won't fear the one who can kill the body, but after that cannot touch the soul. But we will only hold on to the fear of God who could destroy both body and soul in hell. So believers just need to keep believing, <laughs> expecting the Lord's promises are absolute. They are without repentance, the gifts and callings of God without re repentance, and his promises are rock solid. That's why we need to know the word of God and have those promises tucked away. And Psalm 91 is always one of the ones you have to go back to, you know, that it shall not come nigh your dwelling, only with your eyes shall you behold and see his reward of the wicked. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So I just pray that for everybody, for peace, for knowing you are where you need to be, you've done what you can do, and everything is in the Lord's hands, and he will not lose a single one who is his. But it seems only fair that we will be tested to some degree. But we also know from the things the Lord has shown brothers and sisters in Christ that it'll be a narrow escape, but it'll be perfect and perfectly timed um, when, thing, when the mayhem is peaking, when it's really at its height and the police are you know, losing control over things, when the world is truly hating us because we're not going with the flow. That's when I know Mark Hardy's been shown um, we're changed, we're taken, we separate certainly as they begin hating us more and more. And then as the mayhem and chaos will eventually break out, that's when he was shown that we would leave. So I just pray peace and love in the name of Jesus Christ. And I mean peace as he gives it, and the love that is the love of God, which is in holiness and obedience.